I am the Black Panther. Ah, oh, you wish. <laughs> the mantle has been refilled or uptaken or I don't know, whatever it is. Passed on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what what's going on, man? It's been a while since I've talked with you. I know, I know, right? It's yeah, it's been a very, very busy time, but I'll you know, work. I'll work and no play. Yeah, do, I, do, you, do you ever find yourself wanting to go back to the to those lockdown days and say, you know, can I just have a week where I don't have to do anything? Certainly not pandemic lockdown. Yeah. I don't think forced lockdown is ever. I, so I've learned after a year of it <laughs> that it's not, you know, necessarily the staycation you want it to be. <laughs> right. But um, I'd love to plan, you know, some time off would be wonderful. You, you, you would still find something to do because I know that when my wife and I go out in the RV, we, what we do mm-hmm. is it's it's a working RV trip. We still do the movie promotions and stuff like that. We, we drive oh, into town. Fun. And uh, so, so it's like it's like if we were really living in the RV, we would still have to have real jobs. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever really stop being productive one way or another. So. Absolutely. So what did you think of uh, Black Panther? Well, I know we both have seen this at advanced screenings and have a little bit of a, a different... I mean, I, I loved it, and I, in the sense that, like, I'm recommending it. I mean, you got to see it. Mm-hmm. I've seen every Marvel movie you can. I just am thinking that it has really big shoes to fill following the first Black Panther installment. Now, right away, they do... A, gorgeous job honoring and paying tribute to late star Chadwick Boseman that was beautiful right mm-hmm. with the Marvel opening you know graphic and then throughout the film at the end you know uh, but I, I felt like the film overall um, was a little inconsequential to me it was uh, I mean, some great performances some great action some great effects but at two hours and 41 minutes literally like 30 minutes longer than the first one uh, and don't forget, these are films that you stace for all the credits. You know what I mean? Right, right. Um, it's, it's very long, and there was a lot of unnecessary character exposition that adds some emotion and adds other things that I, I appreciate in some films, but I don't know that it's that necessary that much in a Marvel film. This one felt almost more like a DC movie, you know? Why is it that, that Marvel, or pretty much any movie nowadays, when you have a good action-packed film, they've got to spend the last 20 minutes of the movie kind of tying things things back together it's like just in the movie yeah i think so but also here's the thing at what point are we all going to be like okay it's this is what happened with romantic comedies romantic comedies were the hottest genre in the 80s and early 90s and then suddenly they went away and then they changed and now they're back in a different way because they became so formulaic that mm-hmm. everybody was predicting it that the first two minutes where you saw the trailer you knew exactly what was going to happen right and it's kind of like that just became boring they didn't do as well and then now they're back and they're not really romantic comedies they're romantic dramedies there's a little bit a bite you always got to cry in a comedy somebody's got to you know there's got to be higher stakes um and that's how that genre has changed but uh with the superhero genre with the oversaturation of them it's like every single one people people and i'm talking to you superheroes out there <laughs> can we find another way to solve a conflict other than violence i mean what hope is there for the rest of the world and those of us that don't have superpowers if we can't <laughs> solve our problems in ways other than violence you know what i mean so it's it's really i mean sure I, they're not they're not dropping bombs on each other but they're trashing cities <laughs> well you know I, I mean? i'm totally with you that because this is the way that i think when i'm in a movie and this is what it gets into my head and heart really deeply uh-huh. that when they're destroying buildings and destroying cars and things like that my mind is going well who's paying for that who's going to rebuild that what what's right, going to happen and the here? families the families and the children and the women and all the innocents all the you know civilians let's say that are you know washing away and it's just kind of like all right i guess i mean but even if it were even if there were no other collateral damage i still feel like there these you know these are superheroes can't they before they get to the point of you know punching each other in the face sit down and say because i kind of feel like the movie, well you know what i mean things i don't know it's becoming a little formulaic and and i just felt like the, the end of the film especially was inconsequential and i think that's what you were saying too is yeah. you felt like the end was kind of like it ended like did it really need to end like that did they have to do that could it have just ended before that and let, left it a little bit left the stakes a little higher yeah and and this is not a spoiler but be aware people when you go to the movie that there are not two scenes there's one scene at the end and then the credits are there that I mean, don't, don't waste your time to stay to the end right 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 they show this the credits begin and there's the animated credits and then it comes back to the film with an extra scene that wraps the film up but then there are no more scenes usually there's an extra scene with some yeah. new characters or a character from another marvel for, um 
some film that hints at like an upcoming Marvel movie. None of that this time. Yeah, I was because there were still a lot of people in the theater for that, even though the credits were gone. Oh, they, yeah. they, they were sitting oh, yeah. there waiting for it. It's going to play, right? It's going to play. That's There's something else. That's what I'm else. talking about yeah. at two hours and 41 minutes for us all sitting there like, like, um, like, like geese. Yeah, like one more. Just one. Come on, we're, you, you programmed yeah. this. We got one more. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. So I don't know. I mean, you, listen, it's not the best Marvel movie. It's certainly not better than or even as good as um, Black Panther. But you got to see it because it's, you know, Black Panther, Wakanda forever. <laughs> so what is spirited? The best thing about Pasek and Paul as songwriters, as is the case with The Greatest Showman and everything they do, all of their songs are immediately infectious, immediately catchy. Most musicals, you walk in, you don't know the songs because they're new, and right. you have to like either listen to them first or they grow on you, or maybe there's one song that stands out is like, oh, that's a really big one. You know, one song is the memory or whatever. And this is every single song a hit. It's just so great. And you've got wow. Ryan, Ryan Reynolds, going head to head with Will Ferrell throw in Octavia Spencer they all surprise with excellent singing voices the choreography including theirs is so show stopping and the costumes are so cool like I literally wished I could jump into the movie and just be a part of it all like this is the holiday party I want to go to in this movie is it is it in theaters it's in theaters today, and then a week from today, it will be streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. But do yourself a favor. Go see it in the theaters this week. And if you don't have Apple TV+, Plus, definitely go out and see it. Um, and if you do have Apple TV+, Plus and you want to wait, all right, fine. You can do that. Wait, stream it next week on Apple TV+. Plus. But I'm telling you, this is one of the best musicals since The Greatest Showman. Wow. Um, I, I got to tell you, when you say go see it in theaters, I wish people would take that to heart because just in the past one month, we've lost two theaters in this city. No, no. When I tell people to see it in the theater, they go see it in the theater. They know I'm not, <laughs> they know I'm not kidding around here. That's, that's why I also have the other ratings stream it or skip it, and they know they can trust me. So when I say see it, especially if they like a movie musical like I do, a good right. movie musical. Right, you know? right, right. So what's, what's up with Lost in Oz? I, I'm not familiar with that. Well, I think we've talked about it before. It's been a couple of years, but a few years ago, this Amazon Prime video series called Lost in Oz was yes, two right. seasons, won three Emmy Awards. It's a continuation, a modernization of The Wizard of Oz, where uh, Dorothy's you know granddaughter returns, and, uh, and she's really great. And there's all these uh, this new generation. It's it's a very tech sci-fi kind of cool, but really awesome storytelling. One of my favorite animated series of all time, and was canceled after two seasons only because. Uh, Amazon got rid of their entire animated and children's and family programming department. Wow. Um, and the great thing about it, it, was, it wasn't just like family type. It was like great for all ages, but they were 20 minute episodes, two seasons. And then it ended on a cliffhanger because it was going to continue, you know? Well, the brand is continuing now. They're uh, wow. the creators and executive producers who also did Smallville and some other amazing projects are back with a short film that launches today. You can see it at bureauofmagic.com slash lost in Oz. Watch this short film. It not only reveals the cliffhanger, resolves the cliffhanger from the end of season two, but it hints at, get ready, the upcoming Lost in Oz, the movie, oh, the feature no. film. Wow. It's coming. Yeah. So um, I actually interviewed the creators, executive producer, and the actress who voices Dorothy recently, and that those interviews will be up on my website later today, so you can check that out exclusively at ryanjreviews.com. But definitely uh, bureauofmagic.com slash lost in Oz to see the short film today that will also be able to link to their Passport to Oz, where if you sign up there, uh, while they're putting the film together, you'll be able to vote on certain elements. If you sign up for their Passport, you'll see behind-the-scenes footage, have access to exclusive merchandise, see, um, you know, see how the film is going to turn out as it's being made. It's a really, really cool way that they're bringing Oz fans and community together. I love it when they do stuff like that because I, I'm a documentary freak. I love documentaries Same. and I love to, you know, to see stories come together. Yes, yeah. I love all the behind the scenes stuff and going in and seeing how it's all made. And yeah, it's wonderful. So, I mean, again, it's seriously, you know, I love The Wizard of Oz and all things Oz and I, and I cheerlead all things Oz, but I'm not kidding. This is one of the finest um, Oz adaptations since the original classic because the storytelling is so good because it reaches to all ages. There have been other animated uh, versions of Oz that have skewed much younger, uh, that had been a little less intentional in terms of honoring the original source material and also taking it really new directions. Uh, it's just fabulous. So I, I, the series is still available to stream right now on Amazon Prime Video, but definitely go check out this, uh, this short film today. It's really great. People going to the theaters this weekend, you've got to understand that they are overcrowded. So whatever 
movie they're going to watch, they've got to get there early if they want to get great concessions and not miss the first part of their movie. Smart. And, 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 and I'm telling you, these movie theaters do not have the full-time staff that they once did before the pandemic. I know, I know. It's kind of it's kind of you know run for your life at the theaters, and it takes longer at the concessions. Yep. And, so there are like 20 minutes of previews. I mean, I like to skip the previews if I can. So, yeah. so but, true. You know, so true. Yeah. RyanJReviews.com. Dude, I can't wait to talk to you. We're, we're headed into Oscar season. Oh, we're heating up, Arrow. It's going to be fun. <laughs> well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Thanks, Arrow, and have a great weekend.